and welcome to my alien language slash glyph engine. Uh, before I show you any interesting language letters or anything, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the network. Don't be too surprised or intimidated. This is all pretty simple stuff. Um, there are just one, two, three, four, five, six major pieces, and really only these two are essential to understanding how the how the whole thing works. So let's jump into it. This is the output from just one of the many settings available. I'll step through the frames and you can see how varied all the shapes can be. Boop. Boop. There's another one. Let's go back to frame one. And then I'll go into how each individual letter is formed. First, I pick a base grid. That's a, a grid where the letters are, are written on. You could imagine a LED display, you know, where it kind of looks like an eight if all of the grid spots are lit up, but then you can make a three with three horizontals and two verticals on the left. You know, your basic display in a calculator. I use that idea, and here you can see I have a switch at the bottom, which is, well, a switch. It's switching manually between any of these one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six different variations of creating a grid whether they're hexagonal or based on a circle or based on a grid or here based on a torus I will switch back to the very base grid so you can see what I'm doing and walk you through it as you can see this is a really simple grid it's a super flat not super flat but super geometric torus and all the lines come to the center because both radii, whoops, both radii are just one unit across. So it's exactly uh, as wide as it is tall. But that's useful for creating a grid. So as you can see, my switch is, whoops, let's actually go back to the first one because that's where it is. Uh, this is a null just so I can split stuff out. Excuse me. And the very first thing I do in my algorithm, in my process here, is to set uh, two groups of points. First, uh, four points. Let me make this transparent so you can see where they are. Four points scattered at random places on the surface. And those will be set up as our starting points and then I randomly put one point on the surface that's in a di different spots than the other spots. Uh, all the way through you'll see me glancing oh you'll see glancing mentions of dollar sign F that just means the current frame which right here is one and I'll step through it so you can see that as the frames advance this dollar sign F changes and therefore the random seed changes that's useful later on when I want to generate a whole bunch of glyphs all at once so this single let's just go back to the single point here Boop, go away so this single point is put into a group of end points and this number of points four is put into a group called start and then they're merged together and placed into this is basically the the whole crux the the whole design of the engine rotates around this one node called find shortest path and basically like it says it finds the shortest path between any sets of points now I'll turn it on and you can see that given this grid the surface geometry it uses the edges 
I will make this transparent so you can see. Oh, it's it's a little difficult because it's it's dark on semi-transparent, but you can see that it's the uh, it's the same. It uses the edges only from the input geometry, so that squarish torus that we start out with. It has lines used to go back and forth. Now this is in 3D, three dimensions, because it's a torus, and it's it's kind of hard to represent three dimensions on two dimensions. You have to flatten one of them. So they could look like this character could look like that, or it could look like that, or it could look like that. But what I want to do is just flatten it in the y direction. So that's all we get just this shape and just to reiterate the dollar sign F the frame changes those beginning points and just right there is the basic gist of the whole thing everything else is cosmetic um, next here in my steps I fuse the points that's so overlapping points are uh, uh, there's no overlapping points. Any points that are next to each other just merge. And then polywire, which actually adds thickness to it. Uh, as you can see, it's not entirely super thick, but that's arbitrarily changeable. Make them thin. And uh, I'll just move through the frame so we can see a little bit better. Boop, boop, boop. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Now you know the basics, I'm going to go change up the grid style. Here I start with a circle, but it only has four points on it, so that's technically a square, of course. And then I add uh, a grid of polygons on top of it. It's called Bricker Polygons, and it's the divide sop. And you don't really need to know that, but visually you can see that there's a square defined square with with grids on it let's make this circle a little more well defined with 12 points on it and maybe clean up this grid no more offset so it just looks like that that's kind of a nice grid let's make sure that it's switched to that one we just picked we're going to look at the points then we're going to go back to the find closest at find shortest path. Sorry, and as you can see, some of the paths go around the edge, and we get a kind of nice. Whoops! It's crashed. 